From Third Blad Court on the campus of Carleton College in Northfield, we present another edition of the Minnesota Girls Basketball All-Star Series. It's the 2018 edition, you know how it goes, the Stars and the Stripes and Blue versus White. 42 of the state's top seniors come together for a final send-off. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Peden and I'm joined by an All-Star from her days at Oakland Tech, I presume. Alexis Gray Lawson, you may recognize her from her time at California or with the Phoenix Mercury. Alexis, you don't have any players in this field, but you've had a chance to see and go up against a lot of athletes who will take part. What can we expect from the 2018 class today? I think overall you'll see everybody having a lot of energy. They'll be getting up and down the floor, hopefully shooting a lot of threes, which I love in particular. Um, but I'm excited to see Morgan Hill play for sure. Morgan Hill, Emma Grothaus, Megan Wallstad, I'll a lot of big names. Eight members in this year's field set school records in career scoring. Seven are part of the 2000 point club and five made the top 10 in this year's state scoring race. So there may not be that super score like Andrea Adams a couple years ago, but we're <laughs> gonna see a lot of points today. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see a lot of people shoot, like I said, you'll see some kids from different programs as far as Hopkins, um, some of the perimeter programs like Minnetonka. I'm excited to watch them play. Um, it'll be good to see all the kids be together. And earlier today, the seniors had a chance to run a clinic with Lindsey Whalen and Rebecca Brunson. Of course, they got all of the pageantry associated with this event. What makes the All-Star Series so special? I mean, obviously you get a bunch of young women that are getting ready to go and definitely deal with their college careers, but you also get a bunch of kids that look up to these girls. Um, so you see a lot of community environment, which I love to watch. Um, and you also get the links who get to come in and support that, so I'm excited. Well, I'm sure there are a few athletes who look up to you as well. Well, I'm glad. Now, normally, we'll introduce the starters, but as always, with an all-star event, we're going to let the seniors do the honors, so here's a look at the players who will be taking part in your game. Hi, I'm Aoka Lee. I go to Byron High School. Next year, I'm attending Kansas State University. Um, I'm a post, and my favorite player is Maya Moore. I'm Tasia Buck. I'm a guard. I'm from Red Wing, and I'm going to Evansville, Indiana next year. My favorite player is Maya Moore. Hi, my name is Callie Graham. I'm a guard. I go to Nord Young America. I plan on attending the University of New Hampshire next year, and my favorite basketball player is Jimmy Butler. Hi, I'm Tara. I go to Minnehaha Academy. I'll be attending Fordham University next year, and my favorite basketball player is Carl Anthony Towns. I'm Grace Touche. I'm a point guard, and I go to Northfield High School. I'm undecided on where I'm going next year to play basketball, and my favorite player is Carl Anthony Towns. Hi, my name is Monica Sano. I am a center from Watertown Mayor. Uh, next year, I'll be attending the University of Iowa, and my favorite basketball player is Mercer Janning. I'm Megan Walker from Minnetonka High School. I'm a guard. Next year I'm going to Lehigh University and my favorite basketball player is Jamal Crawford. Hi, I'm Mason Thiessen. I'm from Sock Center High School. I play point guard. Next year I'll be going to University of Minnesota Duluth and my favorite player is LeBron James. Hi, my name is Autumn Liner. I go to Maple Grove High School. Next year I'm attending Wayne State College to play basketball and my favorite player is Kevin Booker. Hi, I'm Carrie Rutledge. I'm a, I play wing at Hayfield, and I'm undecided on my future plans, and my favorite athlete is Jimmy Butler. I'm Natalie Steichen. I'm a guard from Dorothy Glenn and Felton High School. I'm attending MSUM, and my favorite athlete is Maya Moore. I'm Angie Hammond. My position is a forward. I play for Hopkins High School. I'm going to be attending Santa College, and my favorite player is Maya Moore. I'm Kayla Mershon. I'm a forward. I play for Minnetonka. Next year, I'm going to Nebraska, and my, I'm going to major in design and marketing, and my favorite player is Rebecca Brunson. I'm Jacqueline Jarnett. I'm a forward. I go to Maranatha Christian Academy. Next year I'll be playing basketball at University of North Dakota and my favorite player is LeBron James. Hi, I'm Kenzie Wrench and uh, I'm a point guard and I go to Hutchinson and I'm going to Augustana University and my favorite basketball player is Lindsey Whalen. 
I'm Mary Burke. I go to Mount Iron Beale High School. I'm a forward. Uh, I plan on going to University of Minnesota Crookston next year to play basketball, and my favorite basketball player is LeBron James. I'm Tana Hackmackie, and I go to Cromwell High School. I'm a guard, and next year I'll be attending St. Scholastica. And my favorite player is Maya Moore. Hi, I'm Sam Hybe. I'm from Moorhead High School, and I'm a guard, and I'm next year I'm attending the University of Nebraska, and my favorite player is Kevin Durant. Hi, I'm Morgan Hill. I go to Minneapolis South. I'm a point guard, and I'm going to the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and my favorite basketball player is Kobe Bryant. Hi, my name is Brooklyn DeCam, and I'm a guard from Southwest Minnesota Christian. I'm going to the University of Northwestern in St. Paul next year, and I'm undecided on a major. And my fav favorite basketball player is Steph Curry. I'm Taylor Bold. I attend Hermantown High School. I'm a forward, and I plan on going to Bemidji State University next year. And my favorite athlete is probably Lindsey Whalen. Now, Alexis, uh, did you ever get to play in any all-star games in high school or college? Yeah, a couple. Um, I was a McDonald's All-American. Uh, that's right. ABC, that's right. How could I so, forget? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, these fun, these games are fun. Um, they're exciting to definitely be a part of. Um, I think my favorite part, which I'm assuming probably will be their favorite part, too, was actually the community service portion. So, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So the Stars and Stripes are being introduced. Stripes are going first, Jacqueline Jarnett, the all-time leading scorer and rebounder at Maranatha. Mary Burke, a 2,000-point scorer. Sam Hybe, Miss Basketball finalist. What a story on her end. Leading scorer at Moorhead, going to Nebraska. Tiana Hakamaki, there's a name you recognize. The, ha the Hakamakis, big part of Cromwell's success. Kayla Mershon, part of the 2016 4A state championship team from Minnetonka. Brooklyn DeCam out of Southwest Minnesota Christian. They've been a perennial in Class A. Kenzie Wrench out of Hutchinson. They idolize Lindsey Whalen over there. I like, love that kid, love that kid. And there's another girl you're familiar, Morgan Hill, the second leading scorer in Minneapolis South history. I know she was going after her sister. I know that for a fact. Angie Hammond out of Hopkins. And Taylor Vold will not play due to injury. They give the doors to everybody here, so if you get injured, you don't uh, sit out. If you get named, you're coming down. That's awesome. Now, Ioka Lee hurt herself in the state tournament. Taylor Vold, same situation. And Carmen Backus, as we take a look at Natalie Steichen from the Stars. Autumn Alinar reached the 4A state tournament with Maple Grove this year. Carrie Rutledge out of Hayfield, a perennial in Class A. 
Tasia Buck, the Buck family, synonymous with Red Wing. You may remember uh, Tisha Buck from a few years ago. Megan Walker, part of the Lehigh Pipeline. She'll join Mariah Sexy and fellow All-Star Hannah Hedstrom next year. Grace Touche out of the hometown Northfield High School Raiders. Mason Teason, Miss Basketball finalist, and finally got Sox under a state championship this year after being a bridesmaid for years. Tara Rhodes out of Minnehaha, a perennial in 2A, and what a job they've done after what happened to their school. Monica Sinano headed to Iowa, one of many Minnesota recruits to go down there. Callie Grimm out of Norwood Young America. And Ayoka Lee hurt herself in the state tournament and cannot play, but she put up quite a performance in the quarterfinal. She'll join another Minnesotan in Chrissy Carr at Kansas State next year. Now Chrissy moved to Manhattan, Kansas uh, when her father took a coaching job down at Kansas State, but uh, Chrissy would have probably would have made this field if she hadn't moved, but absolutely, we'll absolutely. get a. And I'm a little bummed that we can't see Aoka play because she had seven blocks, had a double-double, and almost got Byron past Sox Center in the quarterfinals. Wow. In 2A. It seemed like we had a lot of injuries at State this year. In the NBA, I know Jimmy Butler came back, yep. but the Warriors are banged up. Yeah. Now, are you a Warriors fan? Or, I am. Because I know you're I from am. Oakland originally. I am. I am. I'm a big Warriors fan. I was actually a, a Warriors fan when Byron Davis was there. You, so, so you and you and Tisa Mitchell, the North coach, you two were, could probably relate because uh, the, you weren't part of the bandwagoners. You were no, no you we were the originals. <laughs> so the stars will wear the dark, the stripes will wear the white, and I believe we're going to play quarters today because I see ten minutes on the clock and we're not going to play ten minute halves. That's not long enough. Sam Hybe looking to get us started, misses the three pointer, and the rebound goes to Mason Tisen. And as you can see, all the girls wear their high school jerseys, so you're going to have some duplicate numbers. I love how they're sharing the ball. They're getting up and down. I knew that three was going in. I felt it. Mason Teason. Sox Center again. They finished second for how many years in Class 2A? Finally got the trophy they were looking for. And Mary Burke, part of a litany of scores at Mountain Iron Buell. Chelsea Mason, the all-time leading scorer. Mary Burke, what a great story. Um, and we're off to a quick start in this one. Monica Cezano scoring, and it's five to three. And, and just like they say on whose line is it anyway, the points don't matter. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although when you went for that All-American game, the, the McDag, as we call it for short, I think there was some showmanship involved. Oh, you all yeah. wanted to get a highlight or two. Of course. I mean, you get to get the. I mean, you're finally getting to play with some of the best players in the country. At that time, I was playing with my AU teammates, uh, Courtney and the Paris Twins, um, Devin A. Hampton. So we kind of had a lot of talent on our West team. Tasia Bucks scoring for the Stars team. And speaking of the McDag, as we have another three-pointer, everyone's just gonna shoot up threes today. It's like three city. I feel like I'm at Como. Steph Curry wins, what, two NBA titles, and look what happens. Hey, it's, it's the, the, well, the game Well, look is at changing. Houston, look at the Rockets. The game It seems is like all they do is shoot threes. It's so funny, now everybody's adopting a lot of the Suns sets because they're up and down team when Steve Nash was there. So well, you've got Cezano down low, 10 to six in favor of the Stars. You were speaking of the McDag. That was actually a reason why Morgan Hill's sister couldn't play in this series as Mershon misses a three. Morgan, of course, the younger sister of Taylor. Taylor, a McDonald's All-American herself, playing for Washington. Yeah, me and her had some intense battles when she was at Ohio State. And I'm sure Kelsey Mitchell is going to be nice <laughs> fun to watch. Well, she's a hill, all right. Definitely. She got it on us. And nobody wanted to play against her. I remember doing the South Stillwater game, and at the time, Morgan Hill was leading the state in three-point field goals. We've got a three on the way. Speaking of, that rims out for number five, Kerry Rutledge. Willie Taylor told me, Morgan Hill's unstoppable if she can knock down threes. Seriously. I mean, this kid, you can't really 
can't really do anything with her. I mean, she can now handle the ball. She can get out on the perimeter, shoot threes. She can even defend some of the yards. So it was definitely a uh, There she goes again, although can't get guard. the finish. And her younger sister, Jade, is already past 1,000. Which isn't surprising at all. And there'll be another one coming I up. <laughs> so if you stick around at Como, you're going to have to deal with I the know, Hill sisters. I know. I know. I you're you're not leaving, are you? No, not anytime soon at least. Not unless a uh, WNBA job opens up. Yeah. Then, then I'll, I have to, I have to rethink it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Hobby, a Big Ten recruit, going to Nebraska, finds Hakamaki. And speaking of three-pointers, that's what Cromwell Wright does a lot of. Absolutely. You got a chance to play him last year. I was there. That was it fun. Was, it was fun. It 82, was 74. Fun. And Elena Jones was the hero, 32 and 16. Yeah. She hasn't matched that figure since, but uh, this, I... Excited to see what she'll do next year for De La Salle. She gave them a strong interior presence. Absolutely, and Nora will be back um, from back injury. injury. So they'll definitely they be, uh, be, be a lot different. Um, I was really hard, hard to hear that Nora went down. Uh, it, it, it was, but you know, it didn't surprise me that they got to state. No, not at all. And that's because we have a three that rims out for Natalie Steichen. Tanisha Scott has that team playing stellar defense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, her team Sam continues Hyde. to improve, um, and she's a fantastic coach. So. She's reached the 3A state tournament the last two years. Steichen through the hole, and they'll give her the foul. Not that one. They do call fouls at the All-Star game. So Natalie Steichen to the line for the three-point play, even though the points don't matter. <laughs> Natalie Steichen. She'll play at MSU Moorhead. We'll major in biology. Her pregame ritual involves eat, uh, eating a purple and orange airhead before every single game. Smart kid. Purple and orange, that's an interesting color combination. Morgan Hill like cuts one. to the rim and scores. Morgan started her varsity career wearing number four in homage to her sister and then switched to 24 in homage to Kobe Bryant. We've got a foul. That will send Sizano to the line. Sizano, an outstanding player for Watertown Mayor. She gave Maranatha a run in the 2A section semifinals. She played extremely well. I got a chance to actually be a part of that game. And uh, she did a lot of really good things. Ran the floor with big presence, finished around the basket. I mean, she did a little bit of everything I did. And as always, with these All-Star series, we have line changes. Susano will attend Iowa. Favorite memory was setting a school record for the longest postseason run. Her earliest was playing booster club basketball every weekend. So <laughs> Susano will go out at the next whistle. And we have 10-minute quarters. Each group will play roughly five-minute shifts. There's Angie Hammond, who hits the baseline, Jay. So everybody gets a chance to play. Almost like AAU. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully we won't hear anyone complaining about playing time. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know this AAU season. Uh, or high Always school high AAU. Susano. Susano. I'm going to get that pronunciation down before we're out. <laughs> and there's Sam Hybe, the all-time scoring leader at Moorhead. Put a school known for hockey on the map for basketball. And... Also plays on the baseball team as Hammond works away, pulls off the reverse. Hybe never played softball throughout her career, only played oh. baseball. Pitcher and outfielder. Very cool. If it was a sport, Sam and her family would take it up. Autumn Malinar missing the 15-footer. Sinano high off the glass, no good. Jacqueline Jarnett, the all-time leading rebounder at Maranatha, picks it up. Broke the record set by Onyo Seminum as number 21. She actually Brooklyn broke that record against scores. Como. <laughs> well, she scored 2,000, I think, against you guys, yeah. and then broke Lee's record a short time later. Malinar, bullseye. 17-16, stars over stripes, and then she broke Onyo Simonem's rebounding record as well. The one thing, she doesn't have the assist record. That belongs to her sister. And her sister transferred to North Dakota after some coaching turmoil at Monmouth, and so Jacqueline followed suit. Hybe fakes the three, goes up, floats it in. Very good move. 
I never noticed how strong she was. Well, Hybe, she could rack up points in a hurry, much like a uh, former player of yours. Yeah, Actually, two of them, Andrea Adams, and then I, I shouldn't uh, leave out Michaela Van Nett because she did cross 2,000. And I believe she crossed 2,000 the same night Jacqueline got 2,000. Yep, yep, literally like about two minutes apart, which was kind of crazy. Have you ever been in a game like that where two players no. get milestones? No, it was, I mean, that was by far, far probably one of the funnest games I've been a part of, probably dating back to De La Salle a couple years ago. I mean, it was a fun, up-tempo game, and everybody, we shot a lot of threes that game. Far more exciting than the Matamidi game. <laughs> that, that's you gave what, us that's a memory sure. that Alex Nagel and I will never forget. We always go. We're always going to have a laugh over your 84-64 two-hour marathon. I know it was. Uh, it, it's so. It's so weird. Did you and Eric Rose conspire up ahead of time to no. make us suffer? No, no, not at all. It's. Uh, it's just how the game went. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, we would have played a, a way better second half, which I think was a little bit weird for everybody that we played so well in the second half, and they did, and then right. they played such a great first half. So it was. Definitely right. was a weird game. If it wasn't for that 39-9 run at the start, who knows? Exactly. But that's all right. It's all old news now. But thanks for give, giving us that memory we'll never forget. I know. <laughs> I try to give something every year. Brooklyn DeCam will go to the line. Brooklyn DeCam will tend Northwestern. Out in Roseville. Couldn't imagine a better ending to her senior season regarding her all-star selection. Wow. I think the same could be said for all of these girls. Absolutely. Tara Rhodes goes up against Jacqueline Jarnick. Can't get it down. Angie Hammond. Hammond, when you look at her stat line, a little surprising that she made the field, but the coaches look at everything as she finds Jarnick cutting to the rim. And Jacqueline Jarnett, she can do it all. I covered Maranatha a couple of times, and she can score, she can rebound, she can rack up dimes if she needs to. She can definitely defend. I think her frame will really help her on the next level. And there's Jacqueline Jarnett sending a thank you to Hammond. All right, on cue. And Maranatha, they've got some great players coming up. Desiree Ware, the eighth grader, look out for her. Absolutely. Touche, missing the three-pointer. Rebound number 45. That's Callie Grimm, she can't put it down. And Grimm, and Fox will play in the next game. That's the other thing with this All-Star Series, sometimes you have teammates going against each other. Yeah, sometimes it's great to see too, because you'll finally get to see how they would react to playing against somebody that they know so well. There's Kenzie Wrench out of Hutchinson. Hutchinson Tigers, a perennial in 3A. You know them as the school Lindsey Whalen came from, but they've had memorable battles with Holy Angels as Grimm misses the three. Teason can't get the put back. The Hutchinson Holy Angels series that used to be a conference battle, and they play in the Wright County Conference, so Orno, that rivalry's been a fun one to watch over the years. It's it's uh it's 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 you see a lot of these uh, older teams that have obviously had a lot of great uh, players that have come from. They continue to build and they continue to really develop their young players. So it's exciting to actually watch and see. The line are, and they do call traveling. <laughs> yes, everything you know, fouls traveling. That's still called here. But the one thing you won't have to worry about: wins or losses. We have the 1A and 2A representatives here for this first game. Fred Kinshi out of Hayfield and Casey Kreckling. Tara Rhodes scoring and for 2A, Bob Southworth and Bill Stewie out of St. Peter. We have a really good crowd on hand for this one. Absolutely. We first on the when they first opened up the other side, you could just see everybody swarming right. to that side. Morgan Hill, bullseye. And she did a lot of that for the Tigers. You wonder if they had a deeper team, what they could have done, but they did get that big upset over Wyzetta. Yeah. 
which a in lot of people did not expect from, from him. I no think, one did. Especially with uh, the way that they play, they had played Vizetta like the literally the last game of the to, season. Right. And so, uh, and they didn't fail farewell at all. And it was uh, definitely a good a good game in the beginning, and then they kind of just pulled away. So it was good to hear that they kind of learned from the mistakes that they had and they developed. Hammond beats the buzzer. And that brings us to the end of quarter number one, and the Stripes up 30 to 19. Yeah, and, and every year, you, some years you get some big names. The 2016 class comes to mind. Last year had a pretty good crowd, but this year, I wonder if the Lynx players in attendance today, if that had something to do with it. But I think some of it, but I think a lot of it is they can just come. This is a great class. This is one probably one of the funnest class and deepest classes that I've seen in a while. So I mean, I mean, when you look at the amount of talent that's out here, a lot of these players are and, and kids want to really come and see these players. And next year we'll have some big names too: uh, Sarah Scalia, Franny Hottinger. That should be a fun suburban East battle. I believe Elena Jones will be a senior. Absolutely. At De La Salle. And we have some more Hill sisters coming at South. <laughs> And look at that Tartan team. Yep. They're going to bring back a lot of names. Oh, yeah. They'll and speaking of Wyzetta, no seniors on that year's team. I know. So they are all coming back, and uh, they will all be ticked off. I use another word, but we're on the air, so I have to behave myself. But they're they all going to be, will. let's just say, motivated. You, you, you love that, though. You love that you have, like, your returning class. I know I know how that felt two years ago when you have pretty much your whole team returning. And, you know, that's, that'll be a good development piece for them and it'll help push them through the summer. So let's take a look at some of the All-Stars that were in this game. Ioka Lee, all-time leading scorer at Byron, finished fourth in the state scoring race this year. Jacqueline Jarnett, 2,220 points, 1,581 rebounds, sixth on the all-time list. Mary Burke led the state in steals this year. Sixth in the state in scoring. Morgan Hill ranked seventh. And Sam Hybe, just under the top ten, had an injury that sidelined her for a few games, but I think this she, was the she year was, she was of like breaking Andrea records Adams. too. Yeah, she was like Andrea Adams in the sense that you have players that make everyone else around you better. Hybe was one of those players. I Absolutely. had a chance to cover her once when Moorhead made the trek to Minnetonka. She had a big first half. Minnetonka had to adjust in the second end. They did to beat her, but. She played on the North Tartan AAU program, and I guess it's no surprise that she's as talented of as course. she is. I mean, North Tartan has probably one of the best programs in the state, in my opinion. They, they produced, They've been around. Uh, they oh, produced oh. Enrique Agumboale. Yep. That was Gary Rutledge who scored. Mary Burke, long two. Can't bank it. And for Morgan Hill, who's in this game, I joked with her that if you want to get Kobe to pay you a visit, just hit a couple buzzer beaters in the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> That's for sure. That was a lot funny because they're big UConn fans, and then Enrique hits a couple buzzer beaters, and Ellen uh, worked it out and got Kobe to show up. That's awesome. I finally got to see the interview, so it was it was awesome to see. <laughs> the look on Enrique's face I know. is like, you're kidding me, right? Well, most kids, uh, you know. We, they we, never expect it. No, and not only that, I mean, you look at, you know, the game when I was growing up, it was all about Kobe, you know, and Michael. You know, now oh, yes. it's always going to be about Kobe and LeBron, so. You know, you get to finally meet people that you idolize your whole well, year. Hey, what about Steph Curry? Steph Curry, too. You're a Warriors fan. I know, I know, I know. It's funny because I actually... The Splash Brothers, come on now. Everybody's going to love the Splash Brothers. I mean, you know, you look at Clay and you look at how those guys are developing, you know. That's actually one of Michaela's favorite players. Is Same with Andre Adams. And then Kevin Durant moved to Golden State, and her, I think her mind exploded. It definitely did. <laughs> Steichen hits the runner. Now, you may not have seen this, but we are playing with a shot clock. Of course, in an all-star series, you never have to worry about it. No, not at all. <laughs> it will not take 30 seconds. Not by design. No. Burke looking for Hammond. And again, Hammond, if you look at her stat line, you'd be like, why is she in this series? But again, the Coaches Association, they look at everything. And you know, when you have Hopkins across your jersey, you've got to be pretty good. She didn't get to play as, as much as maybe some of the other kids, but she definitely is, is different. She's, she, I mean, her size, her length, she can rebound the ball, she can block. So, I mean, she definitely deserves to be here. Kayla Mershon scoring for the Skippers on the Stripes team. Rutledge knocks down a three for the Stars. 
Mershon plays for the Stripes, and the Stripes up 32-26. There's going to be some yo-yo effects in an all-star game, of course. Akamaki off the cut from Burke. A pair of Class A rivals hooking up. That's the other thing I love about the All-Star Series. Rivals become teammates, and teammates become rivals. You mentioned Hopkins. You know, Nia Holly missed basketball two years ago. Michigan State. Nia Coffey playing in the WNBA. Paige Beckers is probably going to be missed basketball in 2020. Mershon, deep three, no good. And Rutledge with the rebound. Steichen. Out to Touche. Sonano. Fade away. She's had no some good. nice moves on the block. And as we noted, Iowa with many Minnesota recruits for the years as Burke fires the three. Chase Coley just finished up her college career there. She was a star at Washburn. All-time <laughs> leader in blocks. Last player to record a quintuple double in high school. If you go back a few years, Kasheen Alexander out of Benel St. Margaret's. She's now coaching. I believe coaching at Florida Atlantic as an assistant. Yep, she is. Uh, Callie Peschel out of Sauk Center. Theora Taylor from St. Paul Central. Three on the way. Steichen buries it. shot. Dilworth, Glendon, Felton, they were one of the top teams in 2A this year. I think one of my favorite things right now is that these kids are actually defending. Because usually in all-star games, you get a lot, especially on the guy side, they oh, yes. don't play any defense. And these kids are actually playing good D. Look at the NBA all-star game from last year. Yeah. High B scores. Well, they'll play a little bit. I talked to some girls who've taken part in all-star events for them they take it seriously they want to show to everybody why they got here absolutely and three pointers are one way to do it tasia buck knocks one down so you're going to see a little bit of defense you know not the same level you do in a state tournament of course game. not but it won't be like the nba all-star game which was 192 182 mershon hits the two everybody was griping about it but i'm like it's an all-star game what are you supposed it doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. supposed to be fun. Have fun, dang it. I know, I know. Uh, Terry Rutledge going to the line for two. Rutledge undecided for college, but she wants to be an occupational therapist. Hit seven threes in a tournament as a seventh grader. And her pregame ritual, she's from Hayfield. They always forget to bring the speaker to jam out before games, so she and her teammate Maggie always sing. <laughs> and Hayfield, they host one of the prestigious events on the girls' basketball calendar. They have the Hayfield Showcase, which features a lot of teams from rural Minnesota. Mary Brooks scoring. Mershon with the dime. And Hayfield every year in mid-January, they use both their courts. It's a big event that features a lot of the top schools in A and AA. Nice. And a few of the outstate 3A schools like Wasika and Hutchinson. Five minutes left in the second quarter. It's strange that I'm saying quarters. I know, I know. I'm so used to it in the pros, but not here. Mershon missing the three-pointer there. Rutledge out to Touche. Lob, and Sonano can't save it. Now, in college, I don't think they have any all-star games, do they? No, I mean, they have they have a couple all-star games that you can attend. Um, I know that they usually have one, like, at the NCAA tournament um, where they do, like, the three-point contest and that type of thing. Yep. Um, and so I've taken part in that. Um, so you got to take part in that? Yeah. I was kind of good. Really? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> I don't think do you my have, team do believes you have tape? me either. I know. It's so funny. 
Because, <laughs> you know, they act as if I'm, like, so old. They're like, there was tape around? You're like, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I, oh, yeah. I'm only 30. Grim, Grim hits the corner three. Actually, there's a on YouTube, there's a profile of you from your days at California if you want to look back and embarrass yourself. I know. <laughs> and, you know, you type in your name and... Who, Hammond scored that one, right? Yep. Type in your name, and there it is. I can look all. I can find all there is to know about you from your days with the Golden Bears. Line are missing the turnaround. Forty-two thirty-five. Stripes over stars. Wrench looking for Hill. What a cut! Nice play. Good finish around the basket. Wrench. That was. Quite a pass. Grim for three, short this time. There's been a lot of like back cuts, and it's, it's weird because usually when you get a bunch of kids that have usually never played with each other, it's hard to get those connected, and they're connecting every single time. Well, they do get a practice session with each other, and remember, there's AAU, so some of these girls are used to playing with each other and against each other. Gotcha. Rhodes pulls up, swish. 46-37. Stripes over stars, but we're seeing plenty of offense. Wrench, kick out, Morgan Hill for three. Grimm gets the board. Now here's what I'd like to see, tape from your McDonald's All-American appearance. I got buckets that game. We lost too. I, I was actually surprised that we that we lost, but we did, we lost well, by I think like two, two at the buzzer. Well, if you're going to lose in an all-star game, that's the way to go. I, mean, I know, I know. It, it, not <laughs> I know. It was pretty entertaining. I mean, it, it was fun. It, I think the best part of it is obviously you get to go to the Ronald McDonald house, and then you get to hang out with all of the guy all-stars as well, which, you know, at that time, I mean, you pretty much had a lot of, bit, a lot of everybody. You had Lou Williams, uh, Gerald Green. Um, so you had a lot of people that are still playing, that are still part of the game and, and developing. Oh, yeah. Jacqueline Jarnett scored the last bucket to put the stripes up by 11. They've held on to that margin for some time. Jacqueline headed to North Dakota. Didn't win a state title, but reached the state tournament all six years. Maranatha, nine consecutive appearances in the state tournament. Eight in Class A, one in 2A. Biggest influence, no surprise there, her sister Elena. Although, Jacqueline's a taller one, so I don't know how big of an influence Elena. <laughs> ITs, Elena. Elena was a stud. She was in this event two years ago, part of that class with Andrea Nia Holly, Courtney Fredrickson. Oh, the 2016 group was a fun one. I, told and, her, I used to say that she was like a firecracker because she just like one minute she'll be like super calm, and then the next like she's up the which floor, one? knocking down. Which one are you talking about? Her, her older sister. Oh, Elena. And Jacqueline's more of the reserved one, but... You can tell. But when, not on the court. No. She'll step it up when she needs to. Pretty much got a double-double every game her senior year. And she and Elena also have a... They share their favorite player. Or I should say it's the same favorite player, LeBron James. Like you said, it's you know, LeBron, Kobe, Steph Curry. You and I grew up with Jordan, Barkley, Ewing. Magic. I'll never forget watching it live, the 98 finals. <laughs> Still not haven't gotten that shot out of my head. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Hammond will score. Basketball is completely changing. I mean, I remember watching, like, the Lakers-Boston matchups, you know, with my dad, you know, every Sunday. And, you know, we still watch tape on those guys just to see to figure out how to, to learn mm -hmm. the game. So. And I got to watch a lot of those games thanks to ESPN Classic because I was a little young for the uh, yeah. Larry Bird-Magic Johnson rivalry. But, hey, I grew up with the Bulls. I know. The Bulls. I, know. <laughs> I was a Wolves guy, but you got to respect the greats. And Jordan was one of them. Of Wrench missing the three. And someone asked me, and this, this conversation could take – it would go on forever because nobody would have a clear answer. Mitch McDonald, who writes the Spokesman Recorder, threw this out there, and he said, just who are your favorite players to cover in high school? And you get a sense of the eras we all come from. Uh -oh. Well, my selection, I didn't see you play in Oakland Tech, so I, sorry, I had to. It's all right, it's all right. But my favorites were Angel Robinson out of Central, Taylor Hill, and Andrea Adams, because they were all pretty mellow folks. You know, they weren't, they didn't have big egos about them. 
you know, quietly did their business, but when it was time for them to take over, they could flip it, flip the switch. They had that gene, like a lot of these girls do, and you did not want to, no. <laughs> those were three kids you did not want to make angry. No, no, not at all. I mean, Taylor was just, I mean, a phenom. I mean, even, I only got, I only got a chance to play with her, uh, or I should say against her one year when she was at Ohio State, and that was her freshman year. Uh, but I mean, the kid could score at ease. It was it was kind of fun to watch, you know, as a as an older person, you get to find and get just to watch players. And Angel, I played against Angel so many times, it was crazy. I think me and her were probably the rivals forever. That's right, because she went to uh, yep. well, she went to Marquette. Yep. So I played against her a whole bunch, of, and obviously me and Jay is practice uh, competitions and probably everything that all even the kids now still talk about. So. Rhodes scoring that last bucket, and Brooklyn DeCam hit a three for the strikes. DeCam saves it, 23 seconds. Morgan Hill, she's not going to hold for the final shot. Not when you've got O-board help. DeCam knocks down another three. We might get 100 today. Try it. They're trying. They're almost there. The stripes at 56. Rhodes in transition scores. 41-56. You said there was defense going on today. Well, partially. 56-41. <laughs> now, we're going to keep it right here because we have a three-point shootout that will take place. So the blue and white team, they'll play in the second game, but this is a custom every year, a three-point shootout and a skills contest. So we'll keep it right here, but I don't know. That first half... <laughs> Who stood out in that performance? All those points. I mean, everybody. <laughs> I mean, like Jacqueline definitely from, did. It's just like that line from uh, Leon the Professional, Gary Ullman's character. Everyone. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> or as, uh, who was it? Oh, his name's coming to me. All right, I don't know. So here's how it goes. It's a four-player shootout. We'll have a play-in round, and the winners will move on for a face-off. That's what's tough about these all-star games, trying to find a player of the game, because I don't keep track of points. I know, I know. And so many, we've had so many big names already. Evan Hamling and Megan Wallstead. Megan Wallstead and Evan Hamling, both Miss Basketball finalists. Wallstead won, making her the second Eastview player to win Miss Basketball. And Hamling going to Stephen F. Austin. She was a player that made everyone at Grand Rapids better. Had the chance to cover her a couple of times. She got her name from her mother when she came across it in a novel. That's how she got the name Heaven. It's a good story. Well, because how many girls do you know have that name? No, not very many. Uh, Alexis is a little more common. That is very true. It's all right. Except I got my name what? from a TV show, too. All right, which side do you want? You're going to take right, I'll take left? Deal. All right. You keep score, and I'll keep score. Hamling is one. Two. One. Two. Three. Three. Tied at three. Hamling almost went in. Almost Four. got it. Four. Five for Hamling. Five. Six. Seven. Hamling in a groove. Eight. Oh, she come a little short. Nine. Ten. Oh, there's a miss, six. but Hamling hit six in a row. Eleven. And heaven's Seven. gonna move on to the final. Twelve. And eight. She'll miss that one. But Hamling with twelve, Wolstead with eight, Hevelin moving on, so Megan will have to just settle for the Miss Basketball yes. Award. I what guess a pity. That's it. I know. So you said you got your name from a TV show? Yeah. There was a TV show named Alexis and Dominique, and actually my cousin's name was what, named after what it too. What network did it air on? I have no idea. Because I don't remember that it's show. It's super, supposedly like Alexis was like this like lawyer and blah, blah, blah. But my mom really loved the show, so my mom and aunt named us after them.
Kelsey Lund for the blue and Julia Bierman from Princeton. We'll take the same sides. And here we go. Bierman one. Lund on the board. Two. And Lund going from the top of the key. Two for Lund, three for Lund. Four for Bierman. Four Five. for Lund. Five. Six. Seven. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine for Lund. Bierman just got a little cold. 11 seconds. 10 for Lund. Eight. 11. Eight. 12. Bierman stuck on eight. That's nine. And 12 for Lund. She got nine. So Hamling and Lund both got 12. They'll face off against each other in a 45 second shootout. Wow. Now, how did you do in your three point contest for. I didn't, California. I, didn't, I didn't fare so well. In California, I was fantastic. I mean, I shot almost 45% from the three. But in high school, I probably shot less than 20%, which is weird. How did how did you bump up your figure by 20%? Honestly, I, I had an ACL tear when uh, my after my oh, first sure. year. Oh, sure, blame the injury. And it, I figured it, I, if I was going to be fast, I might as well know how to shoot. It just so happened that the quickness came back, too, so everything worked out. All right, so we're going to have the Stars and Stripes, I see. So, so the Stars and the Stripes will now go at it. So Morgan Hill, no surprise, she'll go at it. Curious to see what happens here. Me too. So I guess we're going to have it all in one sitting today. Now, I... I hear this, you get this every year when the WNBA season rolls around, there's almost, there's at least one person that asks if you can still play. Absolutely. Am I correct? Absolutely. Can you still play? Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Morgan Hill and Kerry Rutledge. Morgan gets the first one down. Two. Rutledge still is not on the board yet, but she can heat up quick. Four. Rutledge is one. Two. Five for Morgan. Six for Morgan. Seven. Three. Eight for Morgan. Morgan was among the Four. top ten at three pointers this year. And Morgan running Five. into a jam, so it looks like she's gonna finish with eight. Last one will kind of it goes. Finished with five. And it does, so Morgan gets nine, so Heaven Hamling and Kelsey Lund still your leaders with 12. Yep. But Morgan wins this round. Now we'll have Sam Hybe and Tasia Buck. Now I don't know where Hybe's three point this is field gonna get goals good. are, but Hybe can do everything. Hybe adopted, you know, came part of an adopted family, uh, but like I said, great story, and not many folks who will take up every sport the way she does. All right, Buck and Hybe. Buck for one. Buck's on the board. Two. Three for Buck. Hybe starting in a funk, now gets on the board with one, two. Four. Three for high beat. Four. Five for Buck. Five for high beat. Morgan Hill had 10, by the way. Six for Buck. Seven for Buck. High beat with five, now with six. Eight for Buck. Nine. Seven for high beat. 10, almost. 10 for Buck. Eight for high beat. Time for one more. We're that goes in it. for nine. We got ten for Buck. So Buck and Hill, the winners in this round. Hamling and Lund, the winners in the first round. So let's see what happens here. And speaking of Josh, we talked about him before the game. There he is. 
He'll now just be the athletic director of Minnehaha, but there's a guy who loves sports. Absolutely. If it's a sport, he'll watch it. Yeah, he's Baseball, absolutely football, one of my favorite. Baseball, football, basketball. He's one of my favorite coaches to watch, actually. Once again, our top two three point shooters are going to go head to head, and we will crown a three point champion. So it will be Heaven Hamlin and Kelsey Lund. They were the top two in our field of eight. Winner will get a trophy what you and a gift card. I He's haven't seen Lund tough. play, so I don't. I may be a little biased, but my money's on Heaven Hamling. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to bet on it? I know. It's just... <laughs> well, wait. We both have the same person. Know, what happens if we? What happens if we lose? All right, I'll take. I'll take Lund. No, no, no. You. Just, <laughs> that, that was gonna say if we both bet on Heaven, what happens if we lose? I know. Do we give Kelsey the money? We gotta give Kelsey the money. <laughs> So Kelsey, I got her on the left, Heaven on the right. 45 seconds. Here we go. Heaven. Lund with one. And Lund's doing it from the top of the key. You don't see that too often. A lot of shooters will go to the Heaven wing. Heaven with one on the board. Lund with two. Went cold. Three. I wonder if that first round wore them out. Two. One short. Three. He's getting the front end of the Heaven's rim starting out. to heat up. Four. One stuck at three. Now she has four. Five. Five. Six. Heaven was. One short again. Heaven was six currently. One with five. Gets the six one. Will we break this Heaven tie? Heaven was seven. Eight. And one gets one, but it looks like Hamling's going to beat her. She got eight. Eight to seven. And we'll see both of them in our next game. Actually, they're both teammates from the blue team. Both our finalists will receive a $25 Nike gift card. Your three-point champion, 2018, from Grand Rapids, Heaven Hamlin. So Heaven Hamlin gets the commemorative ball, and they both get gift cards. Nice. Well, so we what do we right. win? We, we, I mean, oh, we both won. bet on heaven. What do we win here? I don't know, but we, we were right. So, uh, all there right. There you go. We need Skipson. Well, that's what they win. What do we, we bet on heaven and they won. And she won. What do we win? <laughs> <laughs> a program. And a Troy Pearson for their partnership with our youth clinic. Well, we got programs. See, we won the well, we programs. Got, we got those already. <laughs> Uh, Kelsey Lund and Heaven Hamling, both members of the 2000 Point Club. Well, and everyone gets a lot of perks, as we mentioned. We had bowling last night. And how many folks get a chance to have a chat with Lindsey Whalen, get to work That's with true. Rebecca Brunson? They got autographs. I think I missed my calling. I should have been an athlete. <laughs> Hey, being an athlete is one of the best things. People, ta I think, take oh, us for thanks granted. Thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> they take us for granted, but. No, actually, my dream of being an athlete is highly delusional. <laughs> I tried playing pickup once, and let's just say that story sent Tia Albert and Caleb McMorris to the floor laughing. But let's be real. You, you tried to envision me playing any sort of pickup I basketball. I just tried it. I, like, I was trying to think and see if maybe I can look <laughs> at like, it. You're like, nope. I can't get it. Nope. <laughs> I'll I'll just coach. I'll be the next Popovich. There you go. He's my favorite one. I love the Bulls growing up, but Popovich one of my favorite coaches. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't take anything from Pop. I mean, Pop is probably well, one of the and, and greatest minds. As as the undefeated said, one of the most woke coaches in the NBA, That's and it's spread sure. to his coaching tree. You look at Steve Kerr, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Becky Hammond bringing her in. Ivy drives, so we're back to action here. The Stripes lead the Stars 56-41. We still have a winner to crown, and again, we play quarters, 30-second shot clock. Now, did you have a shot clock in California? We in did. Oakland? We did. Wisconsin's going to add one for 2019. Oh, really? And I have a feeling it's only a matter of time before Minnesota adds a clock. Yeah. 
fact, uh, Park Center's new coach, Barb Metcalf, had to get used to it because she came from West Fargo in North Dakota. And they have a shot clock as well. More and more states are adding it. It's a good thing to have. It speeds up the game, especially for for programs that you already are used to speeding up the game. It'll really help speed up right. the game. Otherwise, you just hold the ball. Mershon, oh, you'll get Wasika Marshall. I don't know if you heard that story, but. No. Quarterfinals, Marshall just played keep away and basically gave the game away to Wasika. They won that one 17 to four. Wow. Because Marshall, their coach was like, well, we can't hang with Wasika. And so Marshall just played in a zone. Wasika wasn't going to bite it because they're in front. They don't need to do much. Right. And Marshall's coach got a lot of flack for it. And it probably didn't help his case as Jacqueline Jarnett weaves her way and goes coast to coast. When Park Center upset Centennial and South beat Wyzetta because the reasoning that Marshall's coach gave was that he felt they couldn't hang with Wasika, even though the Tigers finished 18 and 8 and beat Hill Murray in OT on the road. I've always said no matter your seed, you got to go in there thinking you can win. Absolutely. And that if you execute your game plan, you never know. I mean, I mean, South Beach by Zeta, and look what we're talking about. It happens all the time. I mean, you look at sports in general. Like, right. that's the name of our game. When you get into the Loyola tournament. Loyola Chicago? Yeah. I mean, you get into the tournament. And UMBC? It's your time. So. UMBC becoming a household name? Forget the seeds, forget the rankings, just go in there and play. You never know. And only thing that you can do is really just play your game and, and really go to your strengths. If you can do that, then they got to figure out a way to stop it. Much like uh, Cezano, Cezano, I still can't get it. <laughs> Much like Sonato has for Watertown Mayor just going inside and Jacqueline Jarnett doing the same thing. Well, I remember a time when folks were, we were joking that Hopkins was going to win the state championship six years in a row. And you look at the 4A field, it's getting better every year. Yeah. Hopkins, they've reached the final, but the last three years they've lost to Minnetonka, Elk River, and Eastview. Well, you, you look at it, you want to you see people continue to, to, to be able to ballot and challenge, right? I mean, you as the Hopkins plan probably is upset that it has happened, but at the same time, you love it because it's going to feed you. It's going to help you to want to develop and continue to get better. Well, Hybee's going to get this one all by herself off the steel. And look at the college game. You know, everybody is saying how UConn is bad for the sport when they get those runaway wins. Yeah. And every, that's a question every year. Can anyone beat them? And the last couple of years, that answer's been a resounding yes. Well, and I think UConn's great for the sport. It shows that with consistency and hard work, when the cam you can develop and you can get better. I mean, they don't just move. get the best kids. They're getting some of the best talent that wants to work the hardest. So, I mean, you, you look at that, and that's the type of brand that they have. You can't be a hater and be mad at that. Well, and I like what a lot of these schools are doing. Notre Dame, Mississippi State. You know, the year they beat UConn, it was a big turnaround from a 60-point drubbing. Yeah. And here at the high school level, as Hybe hooks up with Mershon, and the Stripes the team looks like they're going to run away with this. The biggest thing is, obviously, you want to – Basketball supposed to teach you life lessons. And those life lessons, I mean, that's a, one of the best things I ever heard some of the kids say during the tournament was that that loss will teach them certain things about themselves. So you, you enjoy the process as the player because you're going to continue to learn things about yourself as an individual. And what I like to see both here and in college, you have these perennials that seem to run the table, Others might get discouraged or, you know, throw out the usual conspiracies that are just nonsense. But you're seeing more teams now committed to, well, you can't recruit in high school the way you can in college, but they're committed to developing, they're committed to developing the players they have as best as they can just to instill that, you know, maybe they can be the ones to get the upset. Well, I mean, and it's you're seeing better competition for. It. Well, it'd be easy to cave in and say, well, Hopkins is going to run the table, and they did get the three peat, but you know, we've seen how tough it, it hasn't been easy for them. Even with Paige Beckers, we've seen Eastview a perennial team. Elk River had that team of seniors a year ago, and Minnetonka had that great group as well, and they're not buying into that. Well, I mean, entire narrative of, well, we're not going to win because we're playing Hopkins. Here's the re the reality of the matter is, you know, every school isn't going to be Hopkins. Of course not, right? The amount of talent you're not going to get every single year. You're not going to get a whole bunch of talent. But the one thing that I will say about the Hopkins coach is that he makes sure that he's developing his players and he's mm -hmm. continuing to develop them. And that's, and I mean, 
That's Same with these few. Exactly. So a pair of 21 scoring to Cam and Touche breaks the striped scoring run, but the stripes are still up by 24. Now we still have a lot of time left in this first game, so we'll see if the Stars work their way back. Jacqueline Charnett missing the three-pointer. Jacqueline does go out there from time to time. Doesn't have a high percentage, much like you did in high school, but maybe uh, North Dakota that'll change. Yeah, you. That's the that's the great thing about college is you get to develop whatever exactly. you have. You know, for some players, you know, you'll get people, especially her size, they'll be able to take spin out a little bit, and then she'll not she'll be able to knock them down. But the fact that she's already taking them, it's a thing in itself. Mary Burke pads her point and rebound totals in a game that doesn't count. <laughs> she'll go to Minnesota Crookston and major in health science. Biggest influence is head coach Jeff Buffetta, who's been part of the Mountain Iron Buell program for 18 years. And played basketball ever since she was in kindergarten with her dad. Mountain Iron Buell, maybe they'll be the next one to get the bridesmaid label off because it was Sox Center and Tui for all those years. Mountain Iron Buell, they've been to state eight straight years. They've had a couple of chances at the final, have yet to win one. They were knocked out in the semis by the under by the upset-minded Sleepy Eye program. Rutledge for three, no good. Mershon with the board. Oh, Jarnett tried to go transition, pass deflected, two to Cam. Jarnett will try to go inside, and that's always tough. All-star game, a regular season game when you're underneath the basket. One of the toughest angles to get a layup. That's definitely true. Teasing for three. No good, and Steichen will save it. We'll have another line change sub come in. Steichen. Off to Sinano, and she is fouled by Mershon. Sinano will shoot two. She's had a fantastic game. Well, Sinano, the tallest one in this game, one of the tallest, she and Brooke and Kayla Mershon both listed at 6'3". I think Sonato is closer to it. Ayoka Lee and Christy Fed are the tallest at 6'5". Lee, of course, unable to play today. We'll try to get a word with her at some point in the second game. Now, Lee, Backus, and Vold unable to play. Backus recovering from ACL and injury. She was able to play the full season, but did not get clearance from her doctor because she had to play at Wisconsin. And Lee, hopefully uh, she'll heal up in time to wear the Kansas State purple. Mershon lost it. Steichen with the strip. Could this be the run we're seeing out of the stars? Well, Kenzie Wrench has other ideas. She blocks Teason. Mershon, I don't know if she has break a look at her. She put Steichen on the spin cycle. Are you sure this is, she knows this is a basketball game, not a football game, right? She just juke Steichen out there. I know, I know. Left her to dry. You gotta, someone's gotta give Mershon a ticket for that. Or as the Lynx would say, uh, Mershon's going to jail. <laughs> whenever a player does a move like that. Morgan Hill converts down low, and usually you don't see this in an all-star game, a 30-point spread like this. Not since we moved to the random draw format. It used to be by class way back when, where eight, all four classes would play against each other, but the bigger classes often beat the smaller ones, and so it was decided to make this a round robin of sorts. Teasing. Shot. Pure. Or as Dan Patrick would say, nothing but the bottom of the net. <laughs> Morgan fakes the three. Wrench thinking about it. Hammond goes up. Can't get around Buck. And oh. Well, it doesn't matter. The Stars team will get it anyway. 75-49 in quarter three of game one. What was your favorite game this season? Not Mata Meet I Come Apart. <laughs> Not because I can, you... I can imagine. Oh, man, so many. 
I covered Park Center Wyzetta going to overtime. I had the Hopkins North boys game that went to double overtime. Oh. Sonata will shoot two more. I, there were just so many close finishes. I, I really didn't have any blowouts. That yeah. section final with Creighton and Woodbury was fun to cover. Oh, man, it's hard to pick. And Sonata knocks down the front end. I got to see Sarah Scali at Stillwater set the three-point record and the single-game record. I saw Alexis break 1,000. That's a terrible question to ask me. I know. Because there, there were so many nail-biters this year. I Maybe the basketball gods had blessed me because I got nothing but close games for most of the year. But I, I felt like that was that was really like, this was like the year of like the underdog. Like this was truly like the year that I think like most teams felt right. like that. Well, and you know, I think everyone, Morgan Hill scoring. She'll uh, go to the line for three. So let's talk a little bit about Morgan. She'll go to Tennessee Chattanooga where uh, Jim Foster is coaching. So she'll be following her older sister as Foster was the Ohio State coach at the time Taylor played. Member of the 2000 Point Club. Biggest influence is her father. Paul runs the AAU program. Mother, big track star back in her day. And, and the Hill family, we talked about Taylor and what she's done in the pros. Well, her older brother, PJ, went to Ohio State as well. No, he's a father, enjoys every minute of it. I've met a lot of nice people with the Hill family over there. PJ and Tanisha Scott, of course, the eldest, uh, coaching at Dela South, started at Minneapolis South. And I don't know what I'm going to do when there are no more hills to cover, <laughs> although with no. so many, and now that they're all having kids, I don't, I don't think... Yo, it's it's kind of like the Van. It's kind of like the Van Ets. Like it's you know, it's like the never-ending story. Right, Rutledge scoring. 77-52, teasing with the dime. I don't know. Well, uh, Taylor, of course, has Maurice. PJ has a daughter. Tanisha's daughter. Kendall's going to yeah. be playing in a couple of years. So I don't think I'll ever have to worry no, about no, not having a never, hill. No. High B three ball. No good. It was a three-point shootout, wasn't it? Yep. Knocked her out of her groove. Teasen stripped from behind by Wrench, but she'll go to the line for two. Teasen, one of the finalists this year for Miss Basketball. She'll go to UMD, Minnesota Duluth. Will major in biochemistry to pursue a career in orthodontics. So if uh, your son Job, I think is how you pronounce it, Job, if he ever needs braces, give Mason a call. Biggest influence is her sister. Advice to younger players, continue to work hard, but don't forget to have fun. What would make you want to say that? <laughs> I suppose winning a state title helps. <laughs> that might make you feel that way a little bit. Nah, but like I said, cool to see Sox Center. because you, And Eastview for all those years, too, when they won in 2014. You never know what a state title can do for your school. Uh, or no, I know had a down year when they graduated a big class. As Teason speeds her way down, and... Hakamaki with the strip. Grimm can't get the save, and Hammond comes up with the board. Like you said, these girls are playing some defense. They do not want to give up a transition bucket. No, not at all. But uh, when you've come close, when you finish second, or you get to the semis, you've so many times and you come up short, you finally get one. That can galvanize a program, and I'll be curious to see if Sox Center continues this run in 2A next year. Oh yeah, they'll have at least their, their younger kids will have the experience of being there and being able to play in that game. They'll know how to handle certain things. You learn so much when, through, through those losses, but you also learn a lot more during the wins. And we may see, we'll have to keep an eye for Robbinsdale Cooper as well. Absolutely. Deja Buck knocks down a three. Now they, downsizing helped them out. <laughs> Let's, I can't ignore that. Less yes. than a minute to go in the third, but they want a state title. Sox center, Lyle Bocelli won one. So I think we had three first-time winners this year. And you never know what that can do. Now, Lyle Pacelli going through a coaching change, and Christy Fett won't be there. But you never forget that state title, and all those younger girls, whether it's at Orno or Sox Center, they're going to remember that. Absolutely. And like you talked about how these girls want to be the next Waylon or Brunson, it starts at the prep level, and they'll want to grow up being the next Mason Teason who gets the put back. Well, the Stars making a mini run here. They got it to under 20. And we're playing, oh, we're going to play a little strategy here. The stripes are going to hold for the final shot. 
Morgan Hill. Rutledge stayed with her. Five seconds. Buck. Oh, you can't do that with Hybe. Hybe playing a little cornerback out there. I know. I think she's a little bit used to that. Well, again, there's not a sport she won't play. And while we're on the subject, Hybe, as we mentioned, going to Nebraska. Earliest memory was winning the Junior Grand Am Tournament in Grand Forks, North Dakota, three years in a row. Of course, being in Moorhead, you can make the trek over. Biggest influence is her father. Pre-game ritual, she has to make her first shot stepping onto the court. Okay. That may be a little bit difficult, but depending on what the shot is. Right, is it a layup? Is it a, a half-court? Is it a Steph Curry half-court shot? I'm gonna go with this probably like a form shot, which right. is, I think as a as a scorer that has to be you have to see the ball go on the net. Fifty seven uh, seventy seven fifty eight. So the stars they trail by thirty, got it to within nineteen, and they have ten minutes to make their way back here. High B two thousand four hundred twenty one points. So is this going to be an annual ritual of yours, Alexis? I'm going to try to make it down here. So would you want to do this again next yeah, year? Yeah, I'll come spend some time. Call a game with me and put up with all of my trivia and I know. jokes about how much you sucked at California? <laughs> uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I will never ask you to play one-on-one -on -one because you would beat me in five. You'd beat me in a minute. You'd, you'd rack up 21 points and uh-oh. Oh. Jacqueline Jarnett takes a tumble. She gets up, she's okay. We don't want to see that. Touche, no good. Sonano with the cleanup. Susano, I think she's maybe my player of the game from the Stars team. Absolutely. The Stripes, I'm not sure who to go with. Jacqueline Jarnett, well, that's a good way to make I mean, up, I mean, I <laughs> make up after a fall. <laughs> well, you got DeCam. She's had a big game. Sonano, turn around. Can't get the bounce there. Hybe, no. Oh. Hybe's gonna hook up with Jarnett. I'm gonna go with Jarnett. I think right now it either has to be Morgan Hill or Jarnett, because I think they're both. Right. Hybe has an advantage. Hybe, she's I, like assist. I mean, she's probably like. Well, and Hybe's been doing it all over there. And uh, we'll take a quick break here as Sonata goes up, because uh, joining us here is Carmen Backus, who. Well, unable to play today, but uh, you were able to play a full season at Chisago Lakes. And for you, how gratifying was it after a couple of years with injuries to be able to ride it out with your team? Yeah, I'm just so thankful and blessed that I was able to finish healthy and have a great senior year and a great experience. So I'm bummed I can't be out there today, but it's fun cheering on all these girls, and they totally deserve it. And even though you aren't able to play, you got to take part in the bowling. Uh, how are your bowling skills, by the way? No, not too shabby. I, I'm okay. So if Wisconsin has a bowling team, are you going to look at uh, doing a little side gig there? Maybe for some cross training. And you also got to take part in the clinic with uh, Waylon and Brunson, uh, two players who you're highly familiar with. Uh, I know you get to see them a lot with your mother being a team chaplain for the Lynx, but how cool was that that you got to lead all of these younger girls with two players who I imagine you've idolized for so many years. Yeah, it's awesome to see how much they give back to their community and that they're really like engaged with the kiddos and with us and it was a really cool opportunity. So what, did you have a chance to, now Waylon I think got a chance to speak with you guys, was that surreal at all? Because I'm guessing you and Waylon have had a couple of conversations before? No, it was really awesome that she would take time out of her busy schedule to come and give us some advice knowing that she was in our position um, a few years ago when she was back in high school and she gave us some really awesome advice and we're yeah, very thankful. How tough is it going to be because you're going to Wisconsin I think in June yet, so you're not going to be able to have a front row seat to those Lynx games. <laughs> I'll try to get in as many as I can this spring before I head out but I'm sure my mom will keep me updated. Now since you're here speaking of the Lynx 
You mentioned your earliest memory spending hours in your driveway wearing your Minnesota Lynx jersey and putting moves on your garbage can. What's the story behind that? Oh, that was my childhood. I would just spend all my afternoons out in the driveway and I had a, a Lynx jersey and these green shorts that I just slept in and then I wore for days on days. And Yeah, kind of weird now thinking back, but I, I yeah, that's that was my growing up. That's what I did. Did your parents have to put a moratorium on how long you wore that? those shorts? Yeah, eventually they grew out of them and then they got handed down to my brother. <laughs> now, favorite memory of this All-Star Series? Anything that stands out to you? You got to do bowling, you got to do the clinic, and you got to take part in the pageantry? Um, I just think meeting all these wonderful ladies and uh, building relationships that I'm sure we're going to keep and play against each other in the future. There's a few other girls who are going into the Big Ten, and so it's really nice to get to know them and build a good relationship, and then I wish them all the best in whatever they venture to do in the next couple of years. Yeah, and uh, one of them will be a future rival of yours and Sam Hybe, who's put on some good moves today. Yeah, Sam and Kayla and Monica will all be in the Big Ten, so we'll see each other quite a bit. Yeah, well, it, that's how it goes around here. Now, how we joked about this a bit, but you're going to Wisconsin. Your father was a U of M graduate, if I recall. So what's going to happen to that rivalry next year for football, basketball? What's going to happen here? Well, he's going to have to be a, a Badger fan for girls basketball. That's all I can ask, <laughs> for sure. And you spent, I think, five years on varsity at Chisago Lakes, or six? Or six years. Six years, so... You got to go to state, I think, w twice. Uh, missed out this year. Uh, Heaven Hamling, I guess, uh, had other ideas, so I don't know if you still hold a grudge. I Probably not. <laughs> but what did you enjoy most about playing for Sasago Lakes? And even with, you know, in spite of everything you've encountered, you still finished third in the state in rebounds this year. What does that mean for you? I just am so glad that I was able to give Chisago one last full year, and I wish the best for all of my teammates there. I think I was able to lead the way and set an example for them to make it to state in the next coming years and just finish strong. And yeah, I'm really thankful for that opportunity. How, how sad is it going to be when you get that diploma, or knowing that you won't be wearing the green of Chisago Lakes anymore? I'm excited. I'm really, really looking forward to Wisconsin, and it was a good opportunity, but I'm excited for the next chapter in my life and to move on and to get pushed and challenged at Wisconsin and stay healthy. Uh, in this form, it, or in this booklet, it said you're looking at speech pathology. Is there a career you're looking into down the road? Um, I just like the, uh, the communication and how English and they mix like helping people in the therapy world, so I'm really open, but that's one option that I'm really thinking about pursuing. And before you go, a couple of things. Uh, what is it about your mentality? Because I've gotten to know you over the years. One of the sweetest folks I've met, well, everyone is, and I'm not saying that because you're here, but when you go on the floor, you turn into a beast. Kind of reminds me of like an Andrea Adams or a Taylor Hill where you go on the floor and if you're, you're someone I would not want to make angry. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Um, obviously, like, I just, I care about all the girls that I play against, but once the, the clock starts, like, I think my passion for basketball really comes out, and I want to give everything I have, and um, that means getting intense and being focused, so, yeah. And what would you say to anyone watching this, is whether it's, you know, next year's class who might make this game, or all those kids you got a chance to work with, your biggest piece of advice from your own history of adversity and how you overcame it to make your way to D1? I would say soak up the moment and really look back about all the people that helped you get where you are. I mean, all of these girls, we've like pushed each other in AAU, pushed each other in high school games, and so it's really a, a big team effort. And be proud of Minnesota girls basketball because we have come a long way and we have a, a lot more ahead to be very, very proud of. So support everyone that is in this together, I would say. Anyone you want to say hi to? Hi to my grandparents in Wisconsin. Yep. All right. Well, hi to everyone, and I'm sure I'll see your mother at Lynx Games. And, uh, well, good luck at Wisconsin, even though it means uh, you and I are going to be rivals for a few years. I'm uh, I hope you have much success, and uh, I guess I'll have a reason now to check you out. So I might, I might have a little bit of red on me the next time you pay a visit. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Carmen Backus of Chisago Lynx.
So it looks like the Stripes are going to get to 100. Now, Alexis, you were keeping tabs on this. I saw Brooklyn knock down a couple more threes. Who else uh, made some plays here? Oh, we've been, I mean, Jacqueline has just been kind of killing it. I mean, just to, I mean. Because I'm still trying to get my player of the game uh, I, considerations. For right now, I, obviously, I think it really is Jacqueline. I mean, Jacqueline, DeCam, I'm thinking those two and then Sonato. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I'm not keeping track of points here. Absolutely. But, hey, the Stars are getting some uh, moments here, too. And there's Natalie Steichen, speaking of stars, out of DGF. Air advice to younger players, never take it for granted and give it your all, because time flies when you're having fun. Really? That's definitely true. <laughs> Morgan Hill. Well, Hammond gets the rebound. I think uh, the Stripes teams, they've been having fun here with all the highlights. And Tara Rhodes has been doing quite a bit, too. Teasen. She must have been watching Michaela Van Nett tape. Yeah, that's what she was. <laughs> she was. Or Sarah Scalia. That girl can shoot deep threes. Mary Burke gets the layup. If you get play Stillwater next year, you're going to have to guard Scalia from the half court line. She'll hit threes from where that gray line is. We unfortunately are not playing Stillwater next year. Um, but it, it'll, be a, it'll be a process. Because usually we do play Stillwater's, but... Uh, what, were you afraid of Scalia now, or Willie Taylor couldn't oh, put no. up with you anymore? No, <laughs> it was probably he couldn't put up with me. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that one. Ah, uh, well, look what he's doing over at Stillwater. Yeah, Took them a few years, and, you know, they added Alexis Pratt. Liza Carlin is, like, supposedly going there, but, you know, he's much like he did at Central. He's giving Stillwater... A reputation they haven't had for a long time. They'll, they'll definitely be good but. for a couple more years. Um, obviously, with, with Sarah leaving, oh. I'm curious to see what that well, dynamic is going to be. There's good. another Scalia, yeah. Amber. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that dynamic is going to work out. But Sarah, you know, Sarah is very different than her, her sister as far as like dynamic of the game. Well, Sarah already holds a school record at Stillwater for points. Alexis, the fastest player in her class to reach 1,000. And it's taken them a while, but you know, Willie Taylor, two-time state tournament champion, Hall of Fame member. No one's going to question his acumen. Mason no, Teason knocks down the three. So the stars, they're gonna be a <laughs> there's a fan who's met, there's this really young fan who's mesmerized by I, I'm gonna go with our, you. Our, our commentary here. <laughs> <laughs> We had, maybe she wants to be the next commentator. I'm, I'm gonna, I, hey, I give her the <laughs> She's mic. She's looking at me like, are you crazy? And <laughs> Mary Burke gets a friendly We're at 99. Friendly ball. 99. Are we going to get 100? Are we, we're I hitting 100. I'm, I don't think we've had a 100-point game since 08. Really? I wouldn't know. I missed this event for a few years and then came back to it, but we might get it here. Come on, Morgan Hill. No, come on. <laughs> it's a good thing we have a shot clock, because if they didn't, they'd just run out the clock. And Tara Rhodes will, Tara's been making a strong finish here. She's Absolutely. had a couple of big plays. All right, I want to see 100. It's an all-star game, come on. All right, uh, we'll get good. it at the line, yeah. maybe. Mary Burke, speaking of 2,000 point scores, I had the chance to see Mary Cross 2000 when Mountain Ira Buell played Maranatha. Yay, we got 100. 234 left. Advice to younger players for Mary Burke, follow your dreams and make goals for yourself. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Or as Luigi once said to Super Mario Brothers, anything is possible, Mario. You just got to believe. <laughs> and Rutledge is going. <laughs> gets her own. <laughs> All right. Stripes, they got to go transition. High B finds Hill. And Buck says, I don't think so. 
So this girl is apparently confused. She's wondering who's videotaping me. And well, yeah, she when she gets older, she... I'm I'm confused on a daily basis. The move. Hammond makes it 103. So this may be, I'd have to take a look, one of the highest scoring All-Star games we've had, at least for one team. 103 to 80. I think we'll have the same the next next game for sure. Oh, we've got some big names in that next group. Wallstad, Roadhouse, there's Hybe scoring to make it 105. Just off, just off observation, I'd have to go with you with Jarnett, Brooklyn DeCam for the Stripes team and Sinano for the Stars. Absolutely. Those are, of course, everyone deserving of this, but it's a lot of fun doing these All-Star games. So they'll have the Hall of Fame induction between games. Kenzie Wrench missing the three-pointer. Teason scores another two. Is there anyone from this group that you enjoyed going against? I know you Absolutely. I mean, you look at Morgan, like I said, Jacqueline, um, we've had some great battles with her. Um, but like I said, Morgan is probably one of the hardest kids to, to try to defend because she has so much to her game. Um, and it's a really complete game. So you try to figure out something that's going to throw off her, her itch, and you really can't because you have nobody that can match up with her. Rutledge knocks down a three. And and don't forget the Hakamakis and the three-point prowess at Cromwell Wright. But, you know, Jacqueline was that all-around threat for the Mustangs. Morgan Hill, like you said, seemed like she was disguised as her sister at times. Seriously. And <laughs> Sam Hybe making a late push. So that will bring the first All-Star game to an end, almost. Rutledge tries to get two more, won't do it. And that will do it. So the Stripes beat the Stars 107-85. One of the highest scoring games we've had in a long time. But great showcase. Any final thoughts on this first group of All-Stars? No, no, no. I wish all these girls good luck. And um, I think they'll do well at the next level. They certainly will. And we're not done, of course. We've got one more game. The blue and the white team, they'll take the floor at 3 o'clock. So... We get to do this again. You can can you handle one more I game, can, Alexis? I can handle that. You think so? You're up for it? All right. So the Stripes beat the Stars 107-85. We'll bring a few players up for uh, final chat. This is the 2018 Girls Basketball All-Star Series at Third Bland Court at Carleton College in Northfield. And I'm joined by Brooklyn DeCam of Southwest Minnesota Christian, Jacqueline Jarnett of Maranatha Christian Academy, and Monica Sinano of Watertown Mayor. Brooklyn, we'll start with you since you're the closest. Uh, you were knocking down threes and taking names out there. Was that your plan going in? Um, I do like to shoot threes, and I'm just lucky that they went in today. <laughs> what does it mean for you to get this all-star selection? I mean, you have many state tournament appearances, but to be a part of such an esteemed group. It's super cool. I've played against a lot of these girls in the state tournament, and I've watched a lot of them play, and it's really cool to see them play. Well, good in the one next to you. So how relieving is it to have her as a teammate as opposed to going against her like you did a couple years ago? So much better. She just runs so fast, and it's a good outlet, and she's really good, so it's fun. Now, Jacqueline, you almost had a blooper in this one, but uh, you made up for it with the three of your own. When you when you hit the floor, you were sliding over. Oh, right. I thought that was a foul. Yeah, I just I thought that was a foul, but... And they do call fouls here. I guess, I don't know, maybe they... Missed it. I don't know. Well, maybe in North Dakota you'll get the star treatment. Hopefully I'll get it there. Well, you and your sister both had a chance to take part in this series. You, you got to watch your sister play two years ago. What does it mean for you to be a part of this festivity? Um, it means a lot. I feel so blessed to be a part of this amazing group of talented like basketball players. And it's just a fun um, opportunity to wear this jersey one last time. Not only that, you leave Maranatha as their leading scorer and rebounder. Your sister holds the career assist record in Minnesota, so... What's that sibling dynamic going to be like when you two wear North Dakota jerseys next year? Um, I think we're going to be unstoppable. It's going to be so fun to play with her again, and I'm so excited that we both get to go to go to UND together. And at the same token, uh, when you have your, when it comes down to who the better sister is, I don't know. How is that going to? Um, what do you two think? <laughs> Me. No, I'm just kidding. We, we play totally different positions, but we just work so well together. So, yeah. 
You're part of an unprecedented streak at Maranatha. You didn't win a state title, but you went to state nine, well, you went to state all six years. Your school has gone for nine years in a row. How hard is that, and what does that say about the dedication and commitment you put into where you're in state every single year? Um, it's definitely a lot of work. We can't expect just to go to state every year. We have to put in the work every year, and I'm so blessed that my team has been able to do it every year. Standing next to you was someone who almost put an end to that streak, Monica Sinano. You don't have any hard feelings from that, do you? No, 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 no. It's, it's a lot better when you get to come here and you get to meet the people um, from all these different classes that normally you wouldn't, I would, normally wouldn't like know either of these people very well. So it's nice. This program is nice to like get, get rid of the hard feelings and kind of like meet new people. Is she just as difficult to defend in an all-star game as she is in a playoff game? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> For sure. I think it was a lot more helpful to have these all-star guards to kind of help us out. But, yeah, it was no easier. Now, who was the best bowler of the three of you? Who, bowler, because you got to take part in bowling. I had, like, five strikes. Yeah. Five strikes. I was pretty good. Oyoko, like, tore ACL, and so I got to bowl for her a little bit, and, like, strikes every time. It wasn't even for myself. So, I mean, if Oyoko won, I'd take the credit. <laughs> what about you, Brooklyn? Um, no, it's not my sport. <laughs> so that's why you're sticking with basketball. Yeah, that's the plan. So, Monica... You mentioned Marissa Jenning up here you look up to, Watertown mayor. You know, maybe not the per credentials that these two schools have, but you talked about being a part of their longest postseason run. And, you know, it's a school that's produced a lot of talent. What does it mean for you to add your name to that list? Um, it's truly an honor. I give credit to all my teammates and all the people who have come before me who have, like, paved the way for our program to be so great. I know especially coming into this season, losing some all-star guards, we had a lot of doubt, and credit to our coach for pushing us and getting us in the mindset that, no, like, we can do this. Um, yeah, it means a lot to have my name up with them, especially with all their accomplishments. It means a lot. Now, while these two are knocking down threes and taking names, you were doing a lot of damage down low. Were you thinking about joining them from behind the arc, or were you just going to stick to the paint? I tried out for that three-point contest, and uh, it didn't go so well. So maybe, maybe in college you'll see a little bit of... Should have hit Rebecca Brunson up for some tips. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe she might still be here. And what did that mean for you? Uh, I don't know what your favorite memory is, but you had bowling. You got to take part in the clinic with two four-time champions from the Minnesota Lynx. How cool is that? It's super cool. There's super cool people here, and it's like people you've watched for forever, and it's so fun to get to play with them finally. It's super cool to, like, see all these, like, players you played against for all these years and actually get to know them and meet them and, like, realize that they're nice people and like not just rivals on the basketball court yeah you go to links and games when you're little and you see these people play and it's mind-blowing that now we're here and we meet them and so much more respect for what they've gone through now that we've gone through our high school careers um it's amazing to be able to see them see them grow and see their accomplishments is there anyone you want to say hi to that will watch this hi grandma oh, hi mom and dad <laughs> All right, I'm going to say hi to my mom and my dad. No, that's my aunt. They look the exact same, but it's my aunt. Well, congratulations on making the all-star field. This was quite a show. I know you impressed Alexis and I with that litany of offense, so I haven't seen a score like that in some time. And good luck to all of you as you begin your college careers. Uh, you and I are going to be rivals in a sense. I'm a Minnesota graduate, so, uh, so you're fine, Jacqueline. And where are you going, Brooklyn? University of Northwestern in the cities. So, yeah. So, you two are okay. Monica, you and I might have some beef. <laughs> Problems. I don't think so. Uh, well, I'll have, a reason to, I'll have a reason to check you out now when you pick it. <laughs> Come out to a game. Carver Hawk is a pretty good place. I've been down there once. So, once again, congratulations on the all star selection and uh, go enjoy that second game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Monica Sinano, Jacqueline Jarnett, and Brooklyn DeCam. That wraps up our coverage of game one. We'll have the blue and white team in a moment.